All right, so I'm gonna try a different spot. Um, the last spot I was at was uh, not very good for streaming. Not that I don't know if this is gonna be any better, but I think the, the internet connection is a little better up here. So I'm gonna try, uh, we'll give it a go, see what it's like. Uh, so welcome to this week's stream. Um, wonderful to see you all here. A uh, couple of things uh, for you this week. Uh, just first thing I wanna start off with um, talking about where I'm at with my uh, projects this week. Uh, right now, uh, I'm working on my Pizza Man or Pizza Delivery. I haven't, I'll have to come up with a, a, a definite title for this. I haven't done it yet. So this week I am working on um, rewriting the story. So the particular method that I'm working with has six sort of rings. And so you start with the, the first ring is talking about theme. And the second ring is talking about story. And so now I'm going to go through and fix a couple of story elements uh, about my uh, screenplay. So that's sort of where I'm at with that. And that's going to take me, I think, the rest of the week in order to get caught up with that. Uh, I'm still continuously doing endless pages. If you haven't done this before, this is one great way to keep uh, your screenwriting creativity and stuff going, is you just write a scene or two every day. It doesn't have to be of the same movie. It can be different movies, different thoughts. But what it is is just giving you a habit of writing. So I've, I've been doing pretty good at doing that. I, I probably hit it, my goal probably about, I normally do at least four, if not five times a week uh, doing that. And that's been really helpful just to get used to the process, just get used to the formatting, just getting used to, the, to using the program. So I really recommend that if you haven't done, sort of uh, haven't just opened up the, like any type of screenwriting program and you just keep writing just a little bit every day. It's sort of like walking every day. It's like a habit you get into. And I've, I've really noticed that this has been a habit I've been enjoying uh, right now. So. So yeah, so that's where I'm sort of at with my uh, where I'm at with my screenplay right now. So hopefully uh, next week I can tell you that I've gotten through my whole rewrite scenes. Uh, I think I have about I want to say about ten scenes I need to rewrite to help with the story progression. A couple of scenes I need to add. So I'll let you know how frustrating or unfrustrating that is. So looks like the stream's working a little better up here too. So. I might have to bring up a light though next time because it's not always very bright up here where I'm at. So uh, let's see. The next thing I want to talk to you about is a little a couple YouTube secrets that I or tips or tricks that I found out this this week. Uh, I was watching Roberto Blake. If you haven't uh, found him yet, I'll link him in the description of this particular video. What I really appreciate about Roberto Blake is he's really a, uh, a very analytical type of guy, which is what I am too. I did, I was really big into mathematics and science. I have a chemistry degree, believe it or not. And uh, I really enjoy how he approaches YouTube and it's really to him a numbers game, you know? And so one of the things, whenever I put a video out, I'm always like, well, does this make sense? Is it any good? You know, is anybody watching it? You know, that type of stuff. And what he wants you to do is to sort of see how your video or channel is progressing is what he does is invites you to take a look at 10 screen or 10 channels that are close to you in size. So I'm about a thousand viewers um, getting there. It's got, uh, I appreciate everybody subscribing uh, who's had already. And he wants you to take those, those people and find 10 of them and take a look at their last 10, their last 10 videos, not their most popular 10 videos, but their last 10 videos. And that gives you, and you can do an average and then a median of, of what that looks like. And that gives you an idea of, of where you are at in terms of, of, you know, are you sort of right on the mark where other videos are hitting? Because I think a lot of times we compare ourselves to people who are, are a lot more successful. You know, if I look at top talent, uh, which is one of the big screenwriting channels in our niche, which has got 266K uh, viewers or subscribers, you know, my videos aren't going to be anywhere close to, to his. So, so this gives you a realistic view. The other thing he recommended is that you really won't know your audience until you've done 30 videos. And then at 100 videos, it's sort of you can sort of see what kind of um, – 
how well you're breaking into YouTube. So it takes a long time. So anybody who says this is instant success uh, doesn't know what they're talking about. It, it, you, know, you might get lucky and you might plan well, but I, I mean, you got to be really strategic when it comes to YouTube and stuff like that. So uh, hopefully I can get another, my goal is to do a hundred videos per year, if not a little bit more. So, so that's probably why you've noticed and I've been doing a little bit more live streams too, just to, to, to try some new stuff. Uh, I got to see Scream, as you probably saw in my last video last week, and that was pretty good. I really enjoyed Scream. I'm a big Scream fan. I'm uh, not really a horror fan, uh, as to say, but Scream, I remember going up to college, and that was one of my first horror movies I've ever watched that I really enjoyed. And so, um, yeah, I really enjoyed that movie. I wasn't so – when they did the reveal at the end, I was like, yeah, I was like, could that have been written a little better? Uh, what I think it does a real good job, though, is it's a master class on tension. They do a really good job of keeping the tension within the movie, I think more so than a, a lot of horror movies I've seen recently. So that's something to watch if you haven't seen it yet or uh, are writing a horror movie. Take a look at the way they do the tension in the scenes because I think that's really much a master class on how to keep an audience tense as you're as – you're, um, progressing through this scene. So yeah, I really enjoyed Scream 6. Uh, and hopefully um, I'll get back to seeing a couple more movies. So you, some more, you might see some more movie reviews from me uh, in the coming days as well too. I got a, a bunch of friends of mine gave me some Fandango uh, cards and so I can start going back. And there's actually some stuff I want to see in the theater as well too. I know John Wick 4, which has been panned by a lot of people. I really enjoyed seeing John Wick 4, and so that was that was pretty cool. So, so we're going to do that. So uh, my next uh, topic is talking about the uh, video I did this last week. Uh, I did Socrate, uh, which is a graphical uh, screenwriting program. Uh, it's, it's in beta right now. If you want to go onto the beta, take a look at that video, and you can uh, go to one of the links underneath and sign up for the beta so uh that's one that's it's if you want to be in a, in a beta but like i said it's a very graphical type of screenwriting program so that uh you don't need to know all the formatting stuff and that's the whole reason he did it was because he was frustrated with the formatting uh, and so so that's one thing i would encourage you to uh, do is, is take a look at it especially for new to screenwriting take a look at this and you can see how the graphical interface works and stuff like that. So I think it works uh, pretty well. I haven't tried it with all the, the hard stuff like dual, dual dialogue. I haven't tried it. It does do parentheticals well. Uh, like it's used to do like a voiceover or whispering or something like that. It does do that pretty well. And uh, the nice thing is that you can spit it out as a PDF. And I think, no, you can just spit it out as a PDF. I don't think you can send save it as a final draft copy. I'll have to look at that. Maybe you can, but I thought it was just PDF. But if you're ever wondering why uh, everything has to be in final draft format, uh, the reason for that is because of the production programs. Uh, the production programs are what cause um, the final draft to be sort of the, the juggernaut it is because everybody takes their final draft script, throws it into these production programs that spits out a budget for them. So that's the reason why uh, Final Draft does so well. Um, and you see a couple of people in the space trying to take them on Studio Binder, uh, but their screenwriting program is very vanilla, very basic. Sort of like Socrate. Well, Socrate's more like it's more visual, I think. That, but the, the thing is they're, they're sort of the same in that they're very basic. There's not a lot of formatting that you have to deal with. Everything is sort of graphical um, in both of those different screenwriting programs. So, yeah, so um, – but that's the reason why everything – and Studio Binder and Celtic are trying to disrupt Final Draft by having their own production software. So, you, so that's the reason why Studio Binder is free because the, the money they make is, awfully, as, is off the program uh, for doing the production. Let's see. 
Uh, and finally, the last thing on the list is coverage. So you're probably wondering, so if you don't know what screenwriting coverage is, it's somebody taking it, reading your screenplay and giving you notes, you know, telling you what worked, what didn't work, what was effective, what was ineffective. Now I'm going to do free coverage for three people starting the 26th. And I'm only going to do one coverage a week. Um, and the catch is I'm not going to charge you for it. Again, it's free coverage. But what I would like is an honest review of did you like the coverage? Did you think the service was 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 good? Because I'm hoping to relaunch a, a coverage service uh, in the coming months. Um, I'm still working on pricing, but between $250 and $300. Now, that might sound like a lot, but that's, you know, someone reading your screenplay, taking a look at all the characters, all the themes, all the plots, and dialogue, and letting you know if uh, one, people would pick it up to buy it, um, two, you know, what do you need to fix or what is it very unclear? Uh, so I, I think it gives, and, and with notes too, that doesn't mean that they're, right either. I mean, you got to take a look at the notes and go, well, what's helpful and what's not helpful. Uh, I know Tyler, uh, I always forget how to pronounce his last name, but the, the top top talent uh, channel now had a good uh, video not that long ago on notes and how to take them as a writer. Uh, because as any screenwriter, you have to learn how to take notes because you're going to get notes from producers and stuff like that. So, uh, so yeah, so, so, so three people coaching for the screen. I'll put the email down in, in the in the description below. Uh, you put that in there. Uh, if you're the first three people, I'll do free coverage for you. Um, and there'll be one a week. So I'll do one starting the 26th. And then, yeah, we'll see how that goes. If depending on, Easter for me is a really busy time. So uh, I'll see. Maybe Holy Week will not be a good time for me to do that. Uh, as you can tell, one of the one of my my day job is I'm actually a pastor, and so here's the I'm in the church right now, up in the up in the sacristy, or not the sacristy, up in the organ loft, because um, actually this is where we get our best internet, believe it or not. So so those times times are are busy. So I'll let you know when I'm going to work on them, but you can get them in as soon as you want. And I already had one person I did free coverage on; they really appreciated it. Again, it tells you gives you notes and stuff like that. You know, the worst thing you can do is is say, nah, it's not for me. The other thing I'm going to be offering pretty soon is uh, talking about people's screenplays on this uh, live stream as well, too. If you want some help, uh, let me know uh, and send me a short screenplay. I don't want uh, 120 pages, uh, you know, 20 to 40 pages. It, it could be part of your screenplay, uh, but I'm happy to do that to, to talk to you. Uh, on this as well too. And I'll try to be a little bit more strategic about scheduling this as well too. So that's, it's more consistent because Tuesday seems to be working pretty well. Um, but I'm, but I'm trying to be more consistent with, with this live stream as well too. So I think that covers everything. So again, I'm going to have timestamps in the uh, description. You'll also notice there's going to be some more uh, Amazon links. Uh, one of the things I'm trying to do in order to help pay for the channel. Like I said, I use Canva. I use some other stuff that I have to pay for. And so I'm just trying to generate some money to cover those basic expenses. You're going to see Amazon affiliate links in, in the descriptions of most of my videos now. If you can click on those, uh, you know, that really helps out the channel. That allows me to, to do what I do. Um, I'm thinking I'm also going to sign up for, uh, you can buy me a coffee, you know, that, that app as well too. Uh, yeah, th those are just some different ways to support the channel. Uh, hopefully with the covered service, that'll help uh, a little bit more and uh, we'll just take it from there. So so if you watch the live stream all the way through there, thank you very much. I hope you all have a great day. Uh, live well and write well.